All right, how's it going, guys? In this video, I would like to talk about uh, Guild Wars 2 comparison uh, with Final Fantasy because at this point, I have been playing Final Fantasy for like 50 something days at this point, and I've gained a lot of um, I've gained a lot of information about Final Fantasy that I I can freely talk about it now and compare with Guild Wars 2. Let me just say that. I haven't actually quit Guild Wars 2 because I'm playing Final Fantasy. I just wanted to try something different. And I saw how the devs love Final Fantasy so much. And I wanted to give it a shot. Uh, keep in mind, I started playing Final Fantasy uh, before even Asmogold played it. And all the other uh, peeps started coming in. And I don't come from the WoW community. I've never played World of Warcraft in my life. So I think it might be interesting... Um, at least for you guys to see this perspective from a Guild Wars 2 player. Uh, because here's the thing, right? Guild Wars 2 is not a bad game. It's incredible. It's very good. So let me compare both the games. I'm going to talk about both the games, what they both uh, do well at, uh, what the other game does better than the other game. And we're going to dive really deep into that. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun uh, for a video. Uh, obviously, the first thing we're going to talk about that is the most important thing in every MMO is the open world. My goodness, open world is like easily the most important thing in MMOs. It's how you start the game. It's it's pretty much the core essence of the game. Even as you do the story in any MMO, you're exploring the world. And let me be the one to tell you right now, um, Final Fantasy fans, don't get mad at me for saying this, please. Okay, you would only understand if you have played Guild Wars 2. But the open world in Guild Wars 2 is way better than Final Fantasy's open world. And I'm going to explain, alright? Before you type the comments, let, let me explain. Guild Wars 2's open world revolves around meta events, uh, working together to secure an objective. And there's multiple maps with multiple times that you can go there and defeat a world boss, whether it's a world boss or breaching an Auric Basin, for example. If you play if you play Guild Wars 2, you know Auric Basin meta event. Um, it's this crazy, crazy event that happens every two hours. And once you finish it, and if you work together and finish it, you get fat rewards at the end and a lot of money. It's, it's so, so good, and it's every two hours. You can just head there, do it every two hours if you wish. People like to do it once a day kind of thing, but it's an overload amount of people, and that's just one meta event. There's so many meta events. There's meta events in pretty much every map. Um, these meta events are on timers, and on Wiki, you can actually see the timers, and the, the open world itself in Guild Wars 2 feels more like you're working together. Okay, so now we talked about Guild Wars 2. What about Final Fantasy's open world? In my experience thus far, in Final Fantasy, open world just looks quite empty uh, compared to Guild Wars 2's open world. I feel like, you know, people are walking around to do either fates or just going about doing their story. In Guild Wars 2, I never see that. The maps are always so populated in open world because they all want to do the events. They want to do meta events together. And the only way to succeed is to have as many players as possible. If you don't have that many players, you'll never finish it. Now, I know Fates is an open world thing and you have ether currents, right? But in my opinion, that, that's not much really to convince me that open world is uh, the main, main core thing about the game um in my honest opinion i think final fantasy succeeds at many other things really well such as raids and, and those kind of things but not open world to be honest i think fates is very very small thing it's many for leveling you want levels for fates i'm i don't know if you can actually farm relics or legendaries or something like that through fates um personally i i don't have much of an idea about that but maybe open world is populated from late game fates or something uh maybe i haven't reached that point of final fantasy yet but even then i know what my end game is in final fantasy and it's raids and trials and learning mechanics and that kind of thing i doubt um open world for me is considered end game in final fantasy whereas in guild war 2 uh, open world is always end game for everyone because not only can you get legendaries and farm legendaries doing open world uh you get materials to make legendaries in guild wars 2 but you also um have to work together to get that thing that you want to get so it's so compact it's so large it's huge 
you only play Guild Wars 2 and you will understand what I'm talking about. It's insane. The meta events in Guild Wars 2 are insane. The events just in general, the whole idea of the open world system is just amazing in Guild Wars 2. And I think, uh, in my honest opinion, Guild Wars 2 does a very good job at open world, um, hands down. From level 1, uh, this isn't like any, from level 1 up to late game, Events are always amazing. There's always stuff happening around the map on a timer. Some of them are 20 minutes, every 15 minutes, every two hours, maybe if it's a meta event. There's just so much going on. Um, you'll never get enough of open world. It Guild Wars 2 succeeds at it immensely. Okay, so now that we talked about open world, what about the progression from level 1 to max level? What's it like? Right, so level 1 in Guild Wars 2, when you start, you do events you do hard quests uh which hard quests are like you walk to an area you don't actually have to talk to the npc you immediately get the quest and you just go around and you do the activities that it tells you it doesn't tell you do this walk here and then you're done or come back to me there is no fetching there's no running errands there's that literally doesn't exist you go to a hard quest and you do the quest stuff in that zone where the hard quest is if you get out of it it considers you out of the quest and you can come back to it and continue its progression hard quests are amazing in Guild wars 2 and there's map completion um regarding that as well so if you get all the hard quests all the vistas all that stuff and then boom like that's your early leveling and every 10 levels you can do the story up to a maximum of level 80 and then after level 80 it's expansion stories okay so guild wars 2 leveling is absolutely amazing um you work together even as you do hard quest um in final fantasy i heavily disliked uh, some of the quest lines where you had to run errands uh specifically the wine quest at level 30 msq up to level 33 msq um it is a lot of back and forth i understand it's part of the game and at, there came a point where i didn't mind at that like i just didn't care because the thing about final fantasy is it fucking pops off when you do all this it rewards you afterwards with insane story points and it just builds up from there so final fantasy does a great job at that specifically um but when we talk about progression uh, in terms of experience and leveling um guild wars 2 does a very good job at giving you a lot of skills early on keep in mind that if you hold one weapon in guild wars 2 it counts it as three abilities and then if you have an offhand it gives you two extra abilities depending what that offhand weapon is so you get a whole lot of access to multiple abilities right off the bat pretty early on in the game Okay, so you get a lot of abilities, and if you hold a two-handed weapon, you get five abilities, and then there's utility skills. Keep in mind that every time you hold a weapon in a different class, it gives you different abilities in Guild Wars 2. So I have a great sword, Reaper. Yeah, by the way, Reaper exists in Guild Wars 2. It's actually my favorite class, by the way. Um, if you hold a great sword in on Reaper, it's different than Warrior when you hold a great sword. So the abilities are intertwined with the weapon you're holding, and you can hold multiple different weapons, and not specifically your your class. You get me? So in Final Fantasy, for example, every ninja will have all the ninja abilities. You're always gonna have daggers. You're always gonna have this, this, that. But that that's not necessarily a bad thing, by the way. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm just telling you that early on in Guild Wars 2, you have access to more abilities than Final Fantasy. A lot of aggressive abilities as well. And you can actually choose what abilities you wanna get. In Guild Wars 2, there's a system called Hero Points. Once you get Hero Points, you're able to unlock whatever ability you want. You don't necessarily need to um, like let the game decide the abilities for you. Uh, no, you can actually level, oh, I want the heal signet. Oh, I wanna get this uh, damage signet. I wanna you know, get this, get that, get this. You can choose which one you wanna get and you can use that. So it's, it's done in a way that's really cool where like you get access to your early abilities that you want without necessarily the game giving it for you. So I think Guild Wars 2 does such a great job at the early levels. That's not to say Final Fantasy doesn't do a good job at the early levels. I love the Final Fantasy early game as well. When I played Ninja and I got new abilities and damage abilities, I loved it. I thought it was awesome as I was exploring, I had zero complaints, honestly, about Final Fantasy's early game. 
not that much complaints beside the besides the errant quests. Uh, but there did definitely come a point where I was like around level 30 to 50 or something like that. Or is it like level 20 to 30, I think? Yeah, that was before I unlocked Ninja. Before I unlocked Ninja from level 20 to level 30, it was all like defensive abilities. Um, my only damage abilities was uh, 1, 2, and 3. Uh, Alien Edge on Ninja is the final combo thing. So that was all I had. Uh, the other abilities were just stuns, lifesteal, uh, second wind for heals, and that kind of stuff. So I didn't have much damage abilities. Like, in Guild Wars 2, I can customize the way my early game is, you know? I can go full damage if I want, without necessarily letting the game decide for me, uh, based on my leveling. I can choose whatever I want, right? So I want a damage signet, I can choose a damage signet in Guild Wars 2. In Final Fantasy, you're stuck with uh, the game giving you the abilities based on a certain level. So I personally like uh, the early game of Guild Wars 2. However, later on in the game in Final Fantasy, it fucking pops off. You get access to Ninja. It gets very complex. You have a million different buttons. You just... I'm, I was literally braingasming when I found out that Ninja has all these mudras and all these different combinations. And I loved it. As I was progressing through the levels of Rogue and unlocking Ninja, I had a lot of fun exploring that and figuring out the best way uh, to optimize my damage. I didn't look up a guide on like how to do the most damage. I'm not even level 80 at that time, right? It's like level 50, level 60. You know, I'm just like exploring. And I came up with my own rotation based on reading the tooltip. I kind of like saw, hmm, maybe I can use Rayton here. And then boom, boom boom bada boom all that shit so i kind of figured out i figured out like a way without necessarily looking up a guide um and as i hit level 80 i also made up my own rotation but then i started looking for guides at max level so just to say the progression tldr the progression in guild wars 2 from level 1 to level 80 is really good amazing like with the way the system is designed with hard quest and meta events and open world and working together. Um, the level 1 to 80 in Final Fantasy, it gets really good later on. Early on, it's okay. But middle way, halfway, when I figure out my only damage abilities is 1, 2, 3 on Ninja after like all this time, it gets, uh, you know, it gets to a point where I just want to unlock more damage abilities and I want to do more stuff. And when I unlock Ninja, that's when it hit. That's when it happened. Once I hit level 30, unlock Ninja, unlock the Mudras, it started getting way more fun. So I'd probably say my least favorite part was level 20 to level 30, where I didn't feel like I had much damage abilities, and I was like yearning for more damage abilities, right? Because in Guild Wars 2, you get a lot of damage abilities because you can choose. Okay, so that's the progression from level 1 to level 80 for both the games. Now, the mount system. Goodness, let me tell you right now. The mount system in Guild Wars 2 is the definition of perfection, okay? And I honestly believe, and it's the best mount system in all MMORPGs by far. And I'm gonna explain that, okay? In in Guild Wars 2, you have mounts, a set amount of mounts that you can use for different situations in the open world. Uh, you can use the Raptor to gap close certain areas. You can use the Springer to get higher ground. Or uh, you can use uh, the Sky Scale to attach to wall and fly up. And get this. Here's the favorite part, right? You cannot freely just fly anywhere you want. You have endurance. So your Sky Scale will have stamina. He will get tired. So you have to land somewhere on a wall and then boost up or land on the ground and fly up and i like that because in final fantasy every mount can fly and they don't necessarily have wings so that doesn't make much uh uniqueness in the different mounts it's literally just cosmetics they don't actually serve a purpose in the open world uh whereas in guild wars 2 every single mount serves a purpose in open world even the skimmer the skimmer can literally go faster in the water and you could even dive, man. I could go underwater and dive with that mount, and it's realistic. In, in Final Fantasy, any mount can go underwater. You can have a, a tiger who can go under the water. And to me, it just doesn't make sense why a tiger would be able to go underwater and be fast. So the mount system in Final Fantasy is purely cosmetic. And uh, for me, I don't like it that much compared to uh, Guild Wars 2's mount system, which is heavily designed... Um, 
around navigating open world in such a manner that is so exciting because get this right every mount has mastery points you get put in master points you level up the mounts um, you can unlock uh, the mount to do different stuff for example the springer and get wars 2 can jump much higher if you put levels in it if you put uh, if you get xp and get the master points so you can jump higher right so each mount has a place hell there, there is there's even like uh, the the mastery system in general is really good in guild wars 2 like you can't even do one of the raids if you don't have enough mastery points uh, uh specifically talking about zara from wing 3 in guild wars 2 uh you cannot get over the leyline glidings if you don't have the leyline gliding uh mastery point so you have to unlock it and you can unlock that by doing certain achievements or by progressing the open world or progressing the story you can get these things to be able to do that raid specifically Okay, so the mount system overall, in my honest opinion, is the best mount system ever in Guild Wars 2. Um, I also think mounts flying in Final Fantasy when they don't necessarily have wings or or visually no, there's no visual way that they can fly, but they still kind of fly. And I understand like what why they did that because uh, my chat once told me that. Um, it was before where you could fly, but then they made it so that every mount can fly. Um, to me, it's a immersion breaker because when I walk around with a tiger and I fly with the tiger, it just looks like I'm f like it's a fly hacking thing, you know? Like, <laughs> like, okay, like I don't know. It just feels like I'm using fly hacks. Like, hey, how is this guy flying with a mount that doesn't have wings? That looks weird, and it is kind of weird because you don't have wings and stuff. Like. Basically, TLDR, the mount system in Guild Wars 2 is just the definition of perfection due to the reason that every mount has a place in the world. If you want high ground, you use this mount. If you want to go on the water, you use the skimmer. If you want to gap close certain areas, you can use the uh, raptor. If you want to get high ground, really high ground, you can use the sky scale. And guess what? Working for these mounts is not easy. Uh, specifically, the sky scale and the griffin, right? The griffin is very good at gliding. The sky scale is very good at flying in a straight line without actually uh, losing like uh, altitude. Um, um, but you have to maintain that altitude uh, by grabbing onto things in the environment and leaping up and doing all these crazy things. And I love it. I think the mount system in Guild Wars 2 is way better than in Final Fantasy. And I think in Final Fantasy, mount system is purely cosmetic and it's just for flying around. And like it, it's it's not really uh, the mount system in Final Fantasy is very standard. Uh, let's just say that. So Guild Wars 2 definitely uh, succeeds very well at that. And it, it adds another dynamic to open world as well. Um, so that's for sure. Okay, story. Let's talk about story. Story, I'm just going to tell you right now. Final Fantasy has a better story by far. That doesn't mean Guild Wars 2 story is shit. I loved Guild Wars 2 story, right? It was amazing. The characters make sense. Uh, the, the voice acting is everywhere. There isn't a single moment in, in Guild Wars 2 where there isn't voice acting. Voice acting is in every single cinematic, every single time you interact with characters. I have never been in a position where I don't hear voice lines. Even when if you're walking around an open world, you hear people talking. NPCs are literally talking all the time. So the, 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 the dialogue is amazing in Guild Wars 2. And the story is really good. Now, Final Fantasy, I will say, is way better, man. It's it's it has a way better storyline. Um, it's very captivating. I literally had moments where my jaw drops to the keyboard because I literally can't believe what the hell just happened. In the story in Final Fantasy, they they make the villain seem not so much of a villain, and you can relate to them and understand their decision. And th they really are well-made characters, specifically. And by the way, there might be spoilers here that I'm going to talk about, so be careful. Um, Gaius, for example, is one of the most well-written characters, honestly. Um, he is a character that was proclaimed as a villain, or we know him as a villain, but we never see that side of him where he's a villain. You get me? He's always seen as like, oh, you're the bad guy. You're working with Asians. You're the bad guy, right? But as you progress the story and then you hit Shadowbringers, you see, holy shit, that's Gaius. Like, he's totally alive. He's not dead. It's been literally since A Realm Reborn up to Shadowbringers to know that he's alive. Imagine the storytelling that they built up from that all the way to the end. 
it's phenomenal. The way they proclaim, the way they portrayed the story in Final Fantasy is amazing. Every character has a purpose. There is literally no boring character. Every character is good. Every character makes sense. I'll tell you, my boy S to nine, a. Hey, that's my boy right there. He's he's one of my favorite characters. And Thancred, he's an absolute alpha. Xenos? Wait. Come. <gasps> oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Nidhogg? Oh shit! Oh my god, Astinian! Oh my god! Oh. Oh, oh, oh. oh my god, I'm freaking out! That's my boy, dude! He 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 has How could one man shoot that bastard? What you mean? Shoot him! What you mean one man? This is Astinian, bro! Out of my shit. It seems he can control himself though, and he he's bonding with Nidhogg. What is this possible? Uh, you can't beat my boy. Look, he doesn't care. <laughs> he doesn't give a shit about you idiots. My lance is slain. Let's go. Let's go. The, the way they built up these characters, and I really think Shadowbringers like, hit it hard. I'm in 5.3, by the way, in Shadowbringers, so I haven't made it uh, to the end. But the story is fantastic. Um, in Guild Wars 2, uh, cinematics are nice, but in Final Fantasy, the cinematics and storyline is phenomenal. Um, the way they portray it, like, like there's a part where Estenian literally drops from the sky in a raging fire. And he said, like, come, Nidhogg, this is not your hand, worm. There's a lot of, like, dialogue that's just so, so, like, it sticks in your head, you know? And, like, when Estenian dropped from the sky and unleashed hell... And he's using the power of the dragon and stuff like that and how it built up to even lead to that point. And the the, the whole thing with uh, Nidhogg and Estenai, I really love that. And then you have Stormblood, which built up on Kugane and the eastern side of Eorzea. And then Shadowbringers takes you to a whole fucking other world, man. You get, to, you get to go to the first world. You get to see the Exarch turned out to be Grahatia. Like... What the fuck is going on? Like, it's shocking, man. Like, these things happen, and it's just crazy. In Guild Wars 2, I haven't had moments like that, necessarily. I mean, there were emotional moments, and there were sad moments in Guild Wars 2 story. And I was very captivated. Guild Wars 2 story is really good, with the Elder Dragons and the Orin storyline, raising Orin from Heart of Thorns, entering into Living World Season 4, building up Orin. I love, like, the whole build-up in Orin's character. I think Ice Brute Saga as well started really well, but they fucked it in the end, because they rushed it so they can get to the other expansion. Now, I don't know, like, the decision behind rushing it, I think, was really bad, in my opinion um because the story was really captivating and i really liked uh the characters in uh in iceberg saga and honestly the iceberg saga ending was shocking and i did like it but at the end after some days passed i was like wow they totally rushed this and then i play final fantasy storyline and it's nothing like that it's not rushed at all it takes its time it builds up the characters it builds up the villains and then it gives you a big fucking boom and it tells you hey asians are this this that asians this this that and then, then your mind is blown because asians the most complicated characters ever they're so complicated they're so diverse there's so much complexity to asians and the, the game never gives you these things like right off the bat and tells you what they are. No, you have to find out later, boy. You're not going to be given the answers at level one, dude. You got to keep playing through the whole thing. You got to embrace it. Now, I think the worst thing you can do in Final Fantasy is skip the story. If you skip the story, you fucked up, man. I'm sorry. This is one of the... This is one of the most important factors to the game. Um, I would understand if you skip if you already have played uh, the story already and you're making an alt account or something but the story is so good man if you skip it you're i think you're wasting out on a lot of a lot of the reason what makes final fantasy so great and it is the story man it is the story it just leaves you questioning and speculating and it just never stops um yeah the, the most important thing generally 
um, is to experience the game fully, in my personal opinion. And I understand people want to like reach end game and do raids and they don't care about story. That's fine, right? You can do that. But you're losing out on such a big part of the game that I feel like... You know, it just... I, I don't agree with people skipping the story necessarily because it is uh, very captivating. So that's all I got to say for story. Next up, I'm going to talk about the HUD and the UI. The HUD in Final Fantasy is amazing and the UI has been built to not be too annoying as well. Like I can perfectly navigate where I need to go and all is well. The HUD in Guild Wars 2 is also perfect. It's very compact. It has 10 abilities uh, with F1 up to F5. So you have a little bit extra abilities, probably 15 abilities, depending on the class you're playing with from the F1 to F5 keys as well, depending on the spec. Um, the HUD is designed very nicely in Final Fantasy where you can move around hot bars, move the map. You can literally customize everything. You can customize the size, the cast animation of the ability. You can move it around. You can do a lot, right? In Guild Wars 2, it doesn't give you that option besides changing the HUD size and that's it. And the board, the minimap size can be rescaled, but you can't actually um, resize hot bars or add extra hot bars, mainly because there is only so many abilities that you can use. Um, the access to the amount of abilities at late game uh, late game Final Fantasy is a lot. So you can be very creative with your HUD, you can move things around, and I like that. The UI system is very good. The one thing I don't like is the Party Finder UI, syst uh, UI look, uh, because when I hover my mouse, my mouse over a trial boss in Party Finder, I want it to show me the picture of it, because when I read the text, I'm not actually sure what that trial is, because I'm obviously new to the game. I have to then press Duty Finder, find what that boss name is, and then put it in Party Finder. And even then, well, I'm going to talk about Party Finder later on, by the way, but just to, just to say, I think the, the Party Finder UI can be improved, um, because uh, it is sometimes a little bit uh, annoying in some areas, especially when someone leaves in your party finder and he was a dragoon uh, you have to then go in party finder change the looking looking for group dragoon and then make it to looking for all dps because the dragoon player left so the game assumes that you're looking for a dragoon uh, which doesn't make sense it should just make it look for all dps right so that there's some ui elements that i don't like about party finder everything else is just fine honestly the fact that you can customize the hud the fact that you can resize stuff and do all you want gives you a lot of uh freedom so final fantasy definitely definitely succeeds very well at the hud in my opinion uh, that's not to say Guild Wars 2 has a bad hud it's just more simplistic and more compact whereas uh, final fantasy is more diverse and you can change around whatever you want which i think is really really good now the most important part that i would like to talk about is the combat animations and then later on i'm going to talk about rotation difficulty and skill priorities uh, because Guild Wars 2 has no global cooldown Right, but first I'm going to talk about the animation of combat. Let me just be the one to tell you right now. The animation of combat in Final Fantasy is amazing. Not only do you have LB3 animation and stuff like that, every animation in Final Fantasy looks so beautiful. Just look at this clip and, and you'll believe my words are true.
and you can see like ninja looks so more much more badass than in guild wars 2 animations the animations are so uh dull it's so normal um maybe dull isn't the right world uh, word in guild wars 2 i'm talking about guild wars 2 by the way in terms of animations here the the animations in guild wars 2 are quite dull uh ish okay like the, compared to final fantasy um they're very normal um you swing your staff around you dodge and it just feels like you make a crack on the floor where like i'm playing ninja and i literally can create a giant fucking firestorm literally and it fucking shreds everywhere and it's got insane aoe right i can drop my death blossom i can hake misatsu i can get like crazy amount of mudras i can put a duton on the floor i can i have so much tools and they, the animations look so cool man like every animation in Final Fantasy for every class and even boss animations, by the way, they're they're excellent. They're they're absolutely beautiful. Um, and I just think Guild Wars 2 animations are very normal. Now, when we talk about rotations, right, and difficulty, the rotation difficulty I think in Guild Wars 2, since it doesn't have global cooldown, it's really hard, man. Just look at Condi Weaver, for example, or Condi Renegade. Uh, Condi Renegade is a little bit easier than Condi Weaver, but look at look at Condi Weaver in Guild Wars 2. The rotation literally is like a fucking journal, like it's like a like a novel. You go down, you read all these combinations and all the crazy shit, and all the while while you have to avoid mechanics, like it's crazy. Um, like the uh, the rotation difficulty in Guild Wars 2 is very high. Uh, they're not easy abilities to use, um, and you also have to uh, maximize the DPS, right? So you have element swapping, you have weapon swapping. Uh, when I play Condi Renegade, I can weapon swap into something, into another thing, into a legend swap, into a utility skill. And in Renegade, for example, when you swap a legend, you get access to new abilities, and it just never stops. There is no pausing point. You are constantly, constantly, constantly making actions uh, there is like resting points for subclasses for example guild wars 2 soul beast you have a resting point until your abilities come up so you can unleash and when you unleash you have to be quick right so that's the rotation difficulty uh for guild wars 2 now is final fantasy easy is that what i'm trying to say absolutely not in my honest opinion here's my opinion right they're just different that's it. They are just different. Because here's the thing. In Final Fantasy, you have weaving. You have off-global cooldowns. You can weave those abilities in with global cooldowns. So it's almost just as fast with more access to more abilities at level 80. So you can see even the ninja rotation, you do quite a lot. There's a lot going on. It's very fast. And I really like ninja for that. Like, I'm really happy I picked this class because I like assassins to begin with. And it's just really cool that that I had access to, like, this crazy rotation, right? And lining up the abilities perfectly with each other so that when they're up, they're all up together. And it's it's perfect. The combat in Final Fantasy is perfect. Um... But with that being said, you don't fuck with Guild Wars 2's rotation. It's not easy. The combat in Guild Wars 2 is legit. Like, it's seriously legit. It's not easy. And it needs a lot of practice. In Final Fantasy, you need a lot of practice with uh, rotation, of course. For sure. But let me, like, Guild Wars 2 is no joke. Like, seriously. If you're getting Guild Wars 2 and you want to be optimal in DPS and really, really know like your class very well, you need to put in a lot of work. 
you need to put on a lot of work in Final Fantasy, but I think Final Fantasy is heavily more focused on boss mechanics. Uh, the mechanics are really the main, main focus point. Uh, rotation is definitely important, of course. I'm not going to say it's not. But in my opinion, Final Fantasy has a more focus on mechanics of bosses compared to Guild Wars 2. So that's something uh, important worth talking about, for sure. Um, uh, which is, by the way, the next thing I'm going to talk about, which is raids, trials, and dungeons. I think the raid system in Final Fantasy is perfect. I'm going to talk about FF raid first, uh, because in Final Fantasy uh, raids, you have level of difficulties. Okay, so I can choose normal, hard, uh, extreme, whatever, ultimate, savage raids, all that stuff. You have levels. Now, why is that good? The reason that's good is because it allows access to all players all types of players whether you're average at the game or whether you're insane at the game or whether you're really good you can play the harder content you have raids for all types of players now what about Guild Wars 2 in Guild Wars 2 it's always hardcore raids are considered hardcore period there is no normal there is no hard there is no extreme nothing like no just think of it like this. Guild Wars 2 Raids is only one difficulty. And it's just purely one difficulty at level 80. There's only level 80 Raids. There is no other like lower level Raids. It's just level 80. You go in. Hardcore content. No bullshitting. And it's tough as nails. It will beat you to the ground. Because here's the thing. The people in Guild Wars 2 in a Raid community, uh, they're not very open uh, to new players. And the chances for you finding a group that is willing to do training and learning is very low in LFG system, you will not find. You have to go on Discord servers. You have to find other areas to learn how to raid in Guild Wars 2. Um, so you, you literally have to study, right? And this is the nature of MMORPGs anyway. You have to study, right? The only difference is in Final Fantasy, they're more welcoming to new players. So you can literally go and train with them if you want. You can put them Party Finder learning this, this, that, and... You know, people are going to hop in and help you out. They'll, you'll do extreme together. You don't have to be this insane god tier player, right? No one cares. They're going to help you. Like, And you also have a sprout icon in Final Fantasy, which shows people that you're new to the game. Um, in Guild Wars 2, there's no system where you, can not, you can't uh, see if someone's new or whatever. But on, on that, but you can't see, um, you can't examine their gear. So you don't know if they're having the the gear that is re like good or if they're not well geared or if they're just like you know not optimized or whatever in final fantasy you have the option to see examine all gear which i think should exist in every mmo and has always existed even in albion online and and other games you have the option to examine gear so it should be an option i think in mmos now uh, raids and trials. This applies to both, right? Raids and trials. Uh, trials are really, really amazing. Like getting to fight epic bosses early on in Final Fantasy is so good, man. Like it just gives you like an introduction to what you're going to face. You know, like I'm fighting Titan. Holy shit! Like that's hype. I'm fighting Titan at level what, whatever, whatever level you unlock it. Like very, very early on. And Titan was such a great boss, and it's actually one of my favorite bosses. Um, in Guild Wars 2, you don't get to do stuff like that. Um, in Guild Wars 2, you have to wait till you reach max level to raid. Um, but you have access to fractals in Guild Wars 2, uh, which allows you to play lower level dungeons, basically. They're kind of like dungeons, but not really. They're fractals. They're, they have their own thing, and there's this thing called Agony Resistance. So you still need Ascended Gear, which is the highest tier in the game. Legendary is the highest, but there's no stat increase or whatever. Ascended Gear in Guild Wars 2 is like the, the best gear that you can put. You need Agony Resistance in there, and, and you can do the content, right? But they're not exactly extremely challenging. I mean, they're only challenging if you're not good or whatever. But I mean, they're not thematic anyway. Like, I also want to talk about this, right? Uh, raid themes, man. In Final Fantasy, every boss feels so intimidating, so epic. Like, the music, the, the mechanics, the, the voice lines. I feel like I'm really fighting a boss, right? In Guild Wars 2, I go on a boss and it just feels like I'm beating up a giant dildo. I, I don't know how to explain it. Like, th there is this boss called Cairn in Guild Wars 2. And he literally is just a giant big purple dildo, and you just hit him. Um, and 
it's just not a very exciting boss in my opinion it's not thematic it's just it's very meh you know the animations are very meh okay but then you go on final fantasy the bosses look so cool they feel cool the animations are cool I feel like I'm really captivated by by the content, like I'm really immersed, and the music is so much better in Final Fantasy. Midori. Bam. Bam. Midori. Whoa. Kind of hit it from here. Scoop up here. Da 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 da. Pepsi man coming for us. Pepsi man. We have standing ground, nice. Okay. Fuck. Oh, ho, ho. Balls and fucking ass, dude. So, that's a major, major point I, I really want to talk about because it's important. I think raids in general uh, and trials and all that are, uh, they've done a much better job at it in Final Fantasy, not just in terms of theme and stuff, but in also getting new players into the content by adding difficulties uh, instead of just one difficulty like in Guild Wars 2. It's just like hard and that's it, you know? So that's just something uh, important to talk about is that it gives you more access to stuff, um, even at the early levels. And obviously I'm going to also include dungeons in this because dungeons uh, are available uh, throughout the entire game as you play Final Fantasy. Whereas in Guild Wars 2, it's only ever early game stuff. It's just, as you progress the story, it's not mandatory to do it, which is a waste. It should be mandatory to do it. I mean, I mean, literally, guys, in Final Fantasy, before you even do your first dungeon, you're, you're supposed to do, uh, they prompt you to do this... Uh, trial uh, not trial whatever it was called it was the training ground right where you enter and then you learn your class you like they teach you how to dps how to do this thing what's your job as dps what's your job as tank what's your job as healer and you go through like a level of steps they teach you with the game teaches you before even playing there's no system like that in Guild Wars 2 there's no system where it teaches you how your role works what your role is, what you're supposed to do. In, in Final Fantasy, they tell you. This does that. DPS, if your healer gets attacked, do this. If you're the tank, make sure you aggro all the mobs. If there's new mobs coming, make sure you hit them. Make sure you activate your enmity thing um, to make sure the mobs focus you only and not the other players. They teach you all these steps. And there's literally, it's, I remember the name of it, Hall of the Novice. That's it. That's what it's called. And I think that's a major important thing. Uh, that really helps and final fantasy does a great job at uh the whole uh dungeon thing uh, not only teaching you but the dungeons are sick like i said get was too it's only from every few levels and then you'll never touch them again the only time you'd ever do dungeons um is to farm currency to get uh skins to get glamour skins um there isn't like xp for it or whatever there is xp for it but i mean like it's uh it's generally considered very early game content you never actually play it at level max level because uh, when you're max level you know that's it um also you have to make new characters to level up uh other shit um so that's also important to note uh there's the lfg system i want to talk about i think party finder isn't perfect but holy shit the lfg system in guild wars 2 at least for raids is really bad i mean it's bad 
um, the LFG system in raids is bad because it relies on a system where basically players have made the system called KP and LI. KP stands for Kill Proof, LI stands for Legendary Insight. Now, what are these things? They're only obtainable in raids, right? So they would go on LFG and they would type, hey, I ask 250 LI. Okay, so then you have to control left click the LI, it will ping it in chat. It's like linking an item in chat, right? And if you don't have enough, uh, you will get kicked or you will be uh, like able to join them if the leader is nice if the commander is nice he will control everything so he he's the he's the leader he's the leader of the group he will kick you if you're doing shit or if he sees you're not doing enough damage yeah people will generally use arc dps a lot here uh, if they say you're not doing enough damage they will kick you or if you're not doing your job or whatever they will kick you and it's understandable because you know this is like really hard raids and they're not a joke like they're serious and if you keep sucking you're just wasting time for everyone you're wasting the whole group's time because they're not able to kill the boss because you keep fucking up right so like i said it's very hardcore in Guild wars 2 um the thing is the game hasn't designed a system where you can differentiate skill level between skill level between players there is no system like that um, so you're never going to know if someone's shit or not. <laughs> um, even sometimes if you have 250 LI, sometimes you can be quite bad even with 250 LI. Um, it's just about grasping the mechanics. And I think LFG system doesn't actually do a very good job at um, making people want to play. If anything, it, it scares people to play, especially the new players. So you have to go on outside sources. You have to find stuff. You have to find ways to join the, the raid or whatever. Now, Party Finder, like we said, is not perfect. Uh, Party Finder in Final Fantasy, uh, like I said, has a lot of flaws. Um, one of those flaws being um, I can't invite people that whisper me. Um, even if they're in the same server, uh, you can't invite them if you have Party Finder, Party Finder active. So I have to quit Party Finder, right click the chat, invite, go back to Party Finder, and then put it out. Um, sometimes, even if you're not in Party Finder, and someone else is on a different server in your data center, you can't invite them. Uh, it's a little annoying. So they have to go to Spriggan so you can invite them. And I just think, like, why, you know? Like, because we're in the same database. We're in Chaos, right? I'm in Chaos Spriggan. You're in Chaos Moogle, okay? I should be able to invite you freely. Even if you're in Moogle, I should be able to invite you in my party so we can raid. You know what I mean? It's just like... I don't know, it's a, little, it's a little like, it's a bit of a small thing, but I just feel like you should be able to invite people if they're in the same data center as you without a problem, without them having to visit Spriggan to receive the invitation. And then Party Finder also has fuck-ups where if someone leaves, uh, it fucks up the LFG, so you have to click on LFG again, uh, reset that Dragoon thing and make it all DPS, right, for example. Uh, and it's just like, I never I never did that option, you know? It's just someone left and he was Dragoon. So it shouldn't automatically default it to Dragoon, you know what I mean? So there are some little things like that. Party Finder can be better, in my opinion. Uh, but other than that, it, it works. It does its job. It's not the worst thing ever. Um, and yeah, it is what it is. Uh, finally, we're going to be talking about last two points. Glamour and wardrobe system. In my opinion, the, uh, Guild Wars 2 has a better glamour system, a wardrobe system, where if you unlock an item or get an item for the first time, it unlocks it for you permanently in your wardrobe. It counts not even as an item. It's just counted as a wardrobe. So you don't need to go to a glamour dresser. You don't need to go through all that shenanigans. No, you just, you get it, you unlock it, you own it forever. You can equip it anywhere you go. And guess what? The best part is there's no limit. You can have a million, million wardrobe stuff from helmet, gear, weapon, everything. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how many you have. You're always going to be able to access them. That's what I like. I think the wardrobe system is much better than Final Fantasy. Whereas in Final Fantasy, you have to go to a glamour dresser, put the item in there, and then you have glamour plates, which in my opinion, there isn't many of them. There's like, what, 15 slots? Imagine this in Endgame, right? I max all the jobs and I want to change up my glamour and stuff. I have to, by default, change one of the 15 to put the thing that I want, but I don't want to do that. And it's like, there just isn't much room. 
Um, and also, you're only allowed to put like 400 items in the Glamour Dresser. So, it just doesn't make much sense to me. Like, why? I think the... I think the best part, the best thing they can do is just make a wardrobe system similar to Guild Wars 2 where you can just have everything and equip it in the Glamour Dresser, sure. You can have everything in the Glamour Dresser, uh, no limit on plates. I think plates shouldn't exist. Just make it so that you can equip every, everything whenever and not the actual item being moved there, you know what I mean? In Guild Wars 2, when you get an item, right click it, uh, right click the item and then click on unlock skin. That's it. That's all you have to do. And you unlock the skin now. Even if you delete that item or drop it, that's it. You own the skin, no matter what. Even if you drop it on the ground, you don't need to put it somewhere and save it so that you can use it later. You get me? It's like you unlock it forever. So I think Guild Wars 2 has a much better wardrobe system. 100%. So I would love to see Final Fantasy uh, kind of tackle that wardrobe system and make it better. Right. Finally, I'm going to talk about PvP and World vs. World. Let's just say Guild Wars 2 has better PvP uh, by far. I think the combat is amazing. Um, keep in mind that in Guild Wars 2, there's skill priorities. Um, like if you cast an ability, um, you can. There's a priority over different skills. For example, on Warrior, if I press my F1 ability, it takes priority over every other ability. So, like you can't cancel it. You can't cancel the F1 once you throw it out. Whereas other abilities, you can cancel them. For example, if I press Axe 2 on Warrior, I can weapon swap and actually cancel that ability. And it puts my Axe on a little few second cooldown instead of the full cooldown. Like, it would cancel it. It doesn't do its full animation. In Final Fantasy, you don't have something like that. Once you press an ability, it goes in. Boom. It's in. Even if you move away a bit, it's in. The ability goes in. Once you press it and it connects, right? Um, whereas if uh, in Guild Wars 2, there, that, that system doesn't exist. So it's very intense and compact because the thing is you can do interesting stuff with that in World vs. World. Like you can cancel an ability to mind game your enemy or sheath your weapon at a certain time while you are casting an ability to trick him into using a defensive ability. And then when his defensive ability runs out, you can go in for the kill and kick his ass. You know, it's like, it's so amazing. The... I think World vs. World PvP in Guild Wars 2 is truly a masterpiece, in my honest opinion. Like, I play Reaper in PvP, I play P Reaper in World vs. World, I have so much fun. Reaper's abilities are amazing, I, I just kick so much ass, and I can bait them and sheath my weapon and do crazy stuff. So I think PvP is not the focal point of Final Fantasy, and Guild Wars 2 does a much better job at it. You can just see this clip for yourself how War vs. World in a, in a Zerg situation looks like. We stop in 3, 2, 1, stop there, stop there, be ready to reverse in 3, 2, 1, reverse, 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 let them come, Emperor in 3, 2, 1, Emperor, v uh, no, no, go range fresh on them in 3, 2, 1, range fresh on them, pull deep, pull deep, pull deep, pull deep, come on, pull, pull, kill the pull, kill the pull, kill the salt, kill the salt. Kill it, kill the cup, come on, do something, reverse in free, to one reverse, reverse, super speed, super okay. speed, super speed. Pog. I signate you, Valor, you're gonna rally maybe, signate our mate, signate our mate, come on. Signate Rosa if you can. Uh, Rise, in free, two, signate, signate, signate right side. Okay, stun me, stun me. Range pressure again in free, to one range pressure, go left side in free. Two, one, he cast the couille with her stealth, reverse, 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 reverse. We're gonna reverse in free. Two, one reverse, bubble go, bubble go, super speed, and ways in free. Two. One, full way to them, full way to them, go left side, bridge on me and dodge left, bridge on me and dodge left, dodge left, dodge the bubble, dodge the bubble, very nice bubble, very nice bubble, stay on me, stay on me, F5 to me, F5 to me, F5 to me, very nice, very nice, very nice, full F5 on me, full F5 on me, good job, good job, good job, very nice DPS, very nice DPS, go right side, go right side to me, right side, yeah. right side to me, our DPS is, is inside, is inside, keep going, keep going, range pressure in front, range pressure in front, full range pressure, go left side in free, to one, go left, go left, come on, bunker up, bunker up, bunker up, dodge back, dodge back, they're gonna put bubble, dodge back, dodge back, break stand, break stand, break stand, break stand, break stand, Signet, signet, signet in front, bomb to rally, bomb to rally, bomb to rally, bomb to rally. Push deep in free, two one, push deep right side, and we can in free. Two one, full race, full DPS, F5 two, F5 two, put everything, put everything, put everything, put everything, stay on me, stay on me, stay on me, stay on me. Very nice, cliff the dome, cliff the dome, cliff the dome, cliff the dome, cliff everything, stay on me, stay on me, stay on me, stay on me. Vous aurez pu être plus rapide sur le dodgeback de la bu, là, tout à l'heure. Stay on me, Emperor, Emperor, go towards them in free. Two one, stab up, stab up, raise up, raise up. Come on, range pressure on them, range pressure on them, dodge right side in 3, 2, 1, dodge right side to me, right side to me, very nice bubble, very nice bubble, this inside, this inside, kill them, kill them, kill them, go right side to me, right side to me, and full push in 3, 2, 1, full push now, full push now, and full effect to them, full effect to them, come on, big bomb, big bomb, big bomb, come on, waste, 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 put your waves, put your waves, very nice, very nice, follow them, follow them, follow them, follow them, on me, on me, focus up, focus up, focus up, focus up, come on, 
Stop, nice, stop, nice. Stop. Chase in 3, 2, 1. Stop, 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 stop. Ah, dommage, hein. Le, le truc, le move sur la bulle, là. On Il y en a qui se sont bien. fait trop catch. Ouais, BG, BG quand même. Le, votre first DPS était incroyable. Hein. Je sais pas. Vas-y, presse F, presse F. Oh. Plus, plus 50 to join. Plus 50, plus 50. Et en vrai, je vais ouvrir la spot. Oh. Je pense que... Ah, c'est un Let's go Yo, là, je suis moi C'est pas des open now. <rire> c'est vrai que depuis tout à l'heure, même si on est moins... On peut bloquer les groupes. Tout... Let's go ouais, eh. euh... Bridge on me, bridge on me, I'll put that shit Well, 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 I'll put that shit, I got okay. you, homie Et par All contre, day, je bro. Je vais je vais te mettre en lieutenant à TIC. An important thing to talk about, by the way, is the fact that range indicators in Guild Wars 2 are really, really nice uh, when it comes to uh, ground spells. Um, there's a feature in the game where you can put an option to make it so that the ability that you're using can only reach the maximum further distance possible. It cannot exceed that. So there is an option to toggle that, uh, which I feel like should be an option of Final Fantasy, but it is not. Um, the ability in Ninja called Shikuchi, you cannot cast it. Um, um, you can't cast the ability at the maximum range possible. Sometimes you will exceed over the range, but your mouse doesn't stop there. You know what I mean? It's like the ability exceeds the range of it, so you're not able to cast the ability. I feel like that should be an option in Final Fantasy where you can do that because it really uh, makes combat much smoother, in my opinion. All right. So, guys, that was a lot of talking. Um, and that's it. That's pretty much it for the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, catch me live on twitch.tv slash alanino9. I love Final Fantasy. Um, I'm sorry if I uh, upset people with my opinions. Um, these are just my opinions about both Guild Wars 2 and Final Fantasy. Because Guild Wars 2 is not a bad game. It is a very good game. And it kicks ass. And it's a lot of fun. And I love it. So, I don't want people to think like I quit the game or I hate the game. I don't. I really don't. I love both Final Fantasy and Guild Wars 2. Um, and I think it's really nice that they're different because um, there's just, you don't want games to be the same, right? That's the whole point of having different games. Um, but yeah, like I said, there's things that I like about Guild Wars 2, there's things I like about FF, and the best thing is like, I love raids and Final Fantasy does such a great job at them. Uh, we haven't had a raid in Guild Wars 2 since Key of Adashim. Uh, which was two years ago. <laughs> so we haven't had a raid in two years in Guild Wars 2. There is a heavy lack of content in Guild Wars 2. That's just something that's a little bothersome. Uh, fractals even like CM Fractals. Uh, there's only three CMs in Fractals. There is not much uh, challenging content besides raids really. Um, so I would like to see them uh, make more content. There is End of Dragons coming in. So I hope uh, Guild Wars 2 pops off with that. And yeah, that's my opinion on everything. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll hopefully catch you guys at a later time. Peace out. Love y'all.